and welcome to Stuff You Need to Know About Australian History. Nationalism was a big part of the 19th century, with many nations federating into existence, and Australia was no exception. Over a period of 35 years, all the colonies were given their own parliaments and responsible governments. The first two were New South Wales and Victoria in 1855, followed by South Australia and Van Diemen's Land in 1856. Upon receiving responsible government, Van Diemen's Land had its name changed to Tasmania, because really, no responsible government would allow its jurisdiction to be called Van Diemen's Land. Three years later, in 1859, New South Wales was divided into two, creating the colony of Queensland. It was not until much later, in 1890, that Western Australia was granted its own responsible government. Throughout the 1890s, a pan-Australian identity was developing. Australia already had a transcontinental cricket team, and in his poem, The Man from Snowy River, Banjo Patterson created a national icon. Another of his famous pieces, Waltzing Matilda, featured many distinctly Australian ideas, like the swagman and the billy. Indeed, Australia's current national anthem, Advance Australia Fair, was written by Peter Dodds McCormick in 1878. In 1889, New South Wales Premier Henry Parks gave his famous Tenterfield oration in which he called upon the colonies to federate into a single nation, Australia, declaring that what the Americans have done by war, Australia can bring about in peace. The following year, representatives from the six colonies plus New Zealand met in Melbourne to discuss the concept of an Australian federation. They all agreed to the drafting of an Australian constitution, which was done through a series of conventions in the 1890s. There were practical as well as ideological reasons for federalism. The first was a fear of invasion. The 1882 docking of a Russian fleet fueled this fear, as did news of German activity in New Guinea around the same time. Anti-Asian sentiment led the colonies to fear an invasion from the north, as well as Asian immigration in general. Another issue was that of trade. Trade between the colonies was difficult for two reasons. Firstly, the railway gauges were different in the different colonies. Secondly, Victoria had introduced tariffs since 1865 to protect local industries during the gold rushes, and all of the other colonies, except New South Wales, had followed suit. It was hoped that a federal government could sort out these problems. Despite the momentum, major impasses to federation developed. Through the 1880s, higher demand for housing was predicted due to the children of gold rush prospectors coming of age. People began to invest large amounts of capital in the housing industry in hope of benefiting from a housing boom. However, the world was sinking into recession, so this housing boom never eventuated, and many lost money on their investments as the housing companies collapsed. Much of the banking sector came to a halt in 1893. A serious drought took hold of Eastern Australia in the 1890s and did not let go until 1903, making it expensive for pastoralists to keep their sheep alive. Simultaneously, demand for wool decreased with the price dropping to 7 pence per pound in 1886. These immediate economic concerns made it difficult for politicians to justify a focus on federation. Furthermore, Queensland and Western Australia withdrew, fearing that federation would result in them losing power to the larger colonies of New South Wales and Victoria. Amongst all this, referenda on the matter of federation were held in New South Wales, South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania on the 3rd of July 1898. The proposal would have been successful if not for the New South Wales Premier George Reid, who declared a minimum of 80,000 yes votes for the proposal to be carried in New South Wales. While Reid supported federation in principle, he was equivocal about specific aspects of the proposed constitution, particularly the so-called Brannan Blot, which required that three quarters of federal revenue be redistributed to the states, resulting in a redistribution of money away from New South Wales. Reid's equivocation earned him the nickname Yes No Reid. In the aftermath of the unsuccessful referenda, a not-so-secret-secret -secret Premier's Conference was held, at which the effects of the Brannan Blot were limited to the first 15 years of federation and the national capital was placed inside the New South Welsh border with the provision that it not be within 100 miles of Sydney. Once again in 1899, New South Wales, South Australia, Tasmania, Victoria and, this time, Queensland held referenda on federation. This time, all was successful. The Western Australian government finally agreed to hold a referendum the following year, having been bribed with the offer of a new railway line. The proposal was carried and Australia was born. In 1900, the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act passed the Westminster Parliament and, on the 1st of January 1901, Australia came into existence. In our next episode, we'll discuss the early actions of the new nation. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you then.